Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Train Man, and welcome to the weekly timetable for the week of October 26, 2014. This week, we had our full complement of six videos, starting with, on Monday, Simulation Protocol Overload number three. He's done it again, and that's precisely what I was thinking when Weibold recovered the second wool. Spoilers. In our forays into the orange wool area, which turns out to be quite difficult, and we get shot off things, and there's some things with invisible places, and very unusual mobs, and a lot of kind of throwing ourselves against a wall, uh, Weibold somehow makes it out with the wool yet again. And then I set out to figure out how to farm the darn thing so that we can get a decent supply of leather armor for the next area. And it actually does, does turn out to be quite helpful. And it probably would have been more helpful if we weren't attacked by Comcast. You'll find out about that more on Monday. Just killing this dude. I'm trying to get armor. Whoa. Well, I screwed up. Well. How well do you keep on I screwed up too. Well, it's only the second episode and you've died you, 20 times. Do you have stuff on you every time you die? <laughs> no. Good. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to get stuff that time. Yeah, I emptied out the chest. I emptied out the frontline chest. I literally, I literally have no other reason to go back to that place except for to get another set of that armor. Ellis, did you find, did you find the stuff that was missing? No. Where I did didn't, it go? I didn't try to go down there. It's, it's just stuck in a shaft somewhere. I didn't know how to get to it, and I didn't have the supplies to reach it either. On Tuesday, we had Tram Man Plays Chris Sora's Locomotion episode 152, right? The third track. We have unlocked advanced new technology that allows us to expand our main lines to 150% of their original capacity. Actually, we could have done that all along, but I didn't think of it. So now, we get a third track and cause tons of problems with the artificial intelligence in these stupid locomotives. We start to sort that out, things get better, as they always do, and the line is kind of... well, it gets better, slowly. Vaguely, sorta. But having that third track is going to be greatly helpful against all those terrible traffic jams that we've been having that I'm sure you guys have noticed and laughed at. I've got to put one there as well, because even though most trains won't be able to fit there, the benefit of having another train able to come in and kind of swoop underneath might outweigh that. Also, I have to put a third platform on length and east. On Wednesday, we had War Thunder Episode 30 Collision. Informative. There is a collision. There are two collisions, actually. One of them is my fault. The other one is not my fault. Jader Y. It includes two battles. The first one, I don't know when it was from. I don't even remember much about it. The second one, I'm flying German, and uh, it's with Chris and Jader, and I think that's it. And that's when all the hilarity happens. I haven't had any War Thunder extras lately, just because the Bomber vs. Bomber was a very specific case, and it's surprisingly... it's surprising that I remembered it in the first place. So having the... Uh, having the memory, the ability to figure out when a War Thunder extra should be is... is... you know, those events are few and far between. The enemy planes just died over here. I wasn't sure if the one chasing you was among them, but he was not. Drop in the bombs. They're not gonna hit, but whatever. I was trying to decide who's chasing Coxer. Oh boy, no, not that guy. Uh, never mind, I'm down. <laughs> yeah. On Thursday, we had the zombie train episode 94, The Alpha Begins. Now, you guys uh, flocked to this episode, which is great. Uh, just me building mountains and stuff, but there's a download link in the description for you guys to check out the first copy of the Temerals Vale and Anaconda Railway. Uh, from what I've heard, it's not working perfectly for a lot of people. In fact, it's probably not working perfectly for anyone, uh, except for the people that downloaded it for 06 and are incredibly lucky at the same time. But that's why it's an alpha and not a full release. I'm getting feedback, things that are missing, although I really don't need to know the things that are missing until we, I really start to work on the TS-12 version. I'm not going to work too hard to get a version, to get two versions of the alpha prepared uh, no, too much work. But enjoy that. 
and be sure to leave me some feedback on uh, how things are. Yeah. I, I eventually, I want it to be that way. I want it to be the map where I'm going to have all of my cars and stuff set up, and whenever I feel like playing trains, I can open my most recent save of this session, and uh, of this map, and come on here and, and just do stuff. Which, speaking of sessions, I was working on putting some locomotives into the TS-12 version of it, and my trouble there was, there's a lot of good locomotives on the download station, but a lot of their actual uh, dependencies aren't on the download station. So that produces some troubles, especially when you're trying to upload multiplayer sessions where you need everything to be on the download station. On Friday, we had Tramman's Fever Episode 9, Building for the Future, because we get this huge stretch of track that we're probably not going to be able to use yet, because it's just too long. The trains don't go far enough fast enough to get there within the limit that the passengers will deem acceptable and therefore it's really not worth it. I mean, I built this long stretch of track and it's good because now the town will form around the track instead of blocking any effort uh, of my construction in the future. But we just spent a lot of money on this and we don't really have anything to do with it yet. Yet. It's, it's, to, uh, it's the beginning of a much larger network that I'm going to be working on in the future. I don't know what I'm going to do with this corridor. I don't think I have trains fast enough to capitalize on it yet. Extra. Sink. Because of the spawning up the tunnel. On the wait, I just did Friday. On Saturday, we had Space Engineers episode thirteen one three, building the tunnel, finishing the tunnel. Last episode, we started the journey to the center of the asteroid. We came out the other side, and we started building uh, a path. So now we finish that path, get a second gravity generator set up, and really, uh, once again, we're laying the groundwork for the cruiser that we're going to go out and fight ships with, hopefully in the future, if I can get everyone in an episode so that we can get some serious work done. Uh, I'm gonna set up some facilities on this end, that is the rest of my... Hey, exactly, remind me how we're gonna, like, destroy this entire asteroid. From the outside in. Or from the inside out, rather. And then we're just gonna make, like, little shuttle bays where shuttles can just come in and, like, park, and then they can have yes. this in, like... And then we can have, like, captain's quarters. Damn right. You have the Admiral's Quarters. That's it for this week in terms of regular videos. We have Video of the Week candidates, three of them. I've been... There have been a lot of threes lately. Uh, the first one that I have to put out there is the Kinder Downfall is blown back up by high winds. Now, this is just kind of impressive. Uh, the waterfall is being forced back by the wind coming out of the valley. It's, it can't fall. It's just a water hover. It looks kind of weird because it's it goes to go over the edge and gets blown back up this way. It's it's actually really impressive. And it probably would have taken uh, taken the cake if it weren't for what actually did, which is impressive and really, really cool at the same time. But aside from really cool and impressive, that's that impressive and really cool, whatever. Mustang save. The Mustang was saved by a dude after it started to roll out of the garage. Frankly, the coolest part of this video is that the door was open and he swung that thing shut just in time. So go and check this out in the video of the week candidates. Uh, it took me, it, there was a little bit of deliberation to figure out exactly what would have been or what is going to be the video of the week. Of course, now you guys know. But uh, I sat there and, you know, really, because I'm having my regrets even now because they're all really good videos. We haven't had a group of videos this, this cool in a little while where they're all kind of on par with one another. Uh, the last one doesn't have a decent title. Uh, I mean, Clip 2005 11 uh, so it's a little bit old, but Motorcycle Chariot Racing. Now, this is cool, and I'm not really sure. I really don't think it's legal, and it's definitely not safe. But this guy, you know how, you know, in ancient Rome, you'd have the chariots pulled by the horse in front, and, you know, you ride around the arena? This dude has it with a motorcycle. And so he's going, like, 60 miles an hour down the highway, 
standing up in the chariot holding onto the reins that control the handlebars of the motorcycle. This guy is crazy. Like, the fact that he worked out that he could get something like this to work is ridiculous in and of itself, but the fact that it does work is even better. Also, it's really loud and masculine. America. Anyways, that's it for me this week. I don't really have anything special to talk about. Um, just, uh, yeah, that. Anyways, so, I'll see you guys around. Train Man out.